Okay, so guys, I'm gonna share an infographic with you now and we're gonna walk through how the numbers work. Now, as we go through this, if you have questions, then throw them in the chat and I'll try to answer them, okay? So, so this is an infographic that was uh, designed to kind of help simplify and explain the JV process. So in this particular example, guys, we are just for ease of numbers going to use a property that's worth $500,000, okay? That's this purple box here. And let's just assume we're not gonna buy a property that doesn't cash flow. So let's assume we find a $500,000 property and it cash flows $400 a month. Now, there's some assumptions in here, guys, when it comes to a $500,000 property cash flowing $400 a month. Some of the assumptions are that, obviously, based on the interest rates today, the rent is high enough to cover that and all the other expenses and still cash flow $400 a month. So that number could be $800, it could be $100, but for this example, we're going to use a number of $400, okay, just to show how the money flows in a joint venture. That's the purpose of this. Okay, so we find this property, great property, cash flows a little bit, uh, $500,000 property. Now, let's just go up from here a little bit and we see the two partners. Now, this is the 50-50 type of split that we were talking about earlier, where we have a financial partner that is bringing the down payment, qualifying for the mortgage, and also covering the closing costs in this particular investment. So they're putting in $105,000 in this particular one. Okay, 20% down, 5,000 closing costs. Obviously, this property is somewhat turnkey. There's no renovations needed, et cetera. I would probably up that number now and say, okay, well, there should be extra money for a reserve fund and extra, extra, extra. But the purpose of this is just to show how the money flows. The other partner, who's the managing partner, does all the work, okay? So they're putting, do you notice, zero dollars in up front, okay? But they're gonna do all those duties that I listed earlier. That's their responsibility. So we have these two partners that are both bringing something to the table. They're buying this $500,000 property. All right, so let's follow this. Year one passes, $400 a month times 12 months, $4,800 a year in cash flow. okay? Let's assume the price went up a little bit, 3%, and the mortgage was paid down, okay? Based on a, on a mortgage calculator, it was paid down $11,000 year one. Uh, so a little, your mor mortgage pay down gets a little bit higher. Cash flow gets a little bit higher. This, let's assume the same price increase, okay? So what are your total returns after five years, guys? Well, the property has gone up 3% per year. And of course, that is, you know, your first year goes up 15,000. And now your second year, 515,000 is going up 3%. So it's a little more than 15,000, et cetera, et cetera. So your value of the property is now almost five hundred and eighty thousand dollars it's gone up around eighty thousand dollars in value assuming this three percent price increase now sometimes guys we invest in a market and these price increases can be 10 15 25 percent sometimes they can be minus five or ten percent so we're just averaging this out okay and saying an average of three percent increase per year now we're minusing our mortgage Okay, it had been paid down almost $60,000 over this period of time. So the $400,000 mortgage is now down to 342. And we're adding up all our cash flow. Year one, two, three, four, five, we ended up collecting $26,000 in cash flow. So our total equity, our value, minus the mortgage that is currently on there, plus all the cash flow we collected, how much equity, how much money has this property created for us? It's created a total amount of $263,616. So now how does that money get split? This is where some of the confusion lies. Well, you notice here that we go over to the financial partner side. After five years, what did they get back? Now let's assume, let's just assume for the, the purpose of this, that maybe they refinance or maybe they sell the property. They don't, I'm not taking into account what closing costs they might have, et cetera, et cetera. But this is how the money is split. First of all, they get their initial investment back. That initial investment, do you remember how much it was? 105,000. So they get that plus 50% of whatever's left over in the gains. So what we could say is they get 105,000 out of the 263. So that brings the 263 down to what? 158,000. Okay, and then that 158,000 ends up getting split into two. So their 105 plus their 50% gain equals 180.
four. That was a 75% return on investment. Divided by five, that's roughly a 15% per year on average gain on their money. Pretty good for doing no work. How many people out there do you think that you could talk to at work, at um, your friends, your family, whoever it might be, some of the contacts that you have, that you could say to them, listen, how are your mutual funds doing? How are your stocks doing? How is your Bitcoin doing? You know, real estate, I'm finding with my partners right now that we're giving roughly a 10 to 20% per year on average return. If you're interested, I'll show you how the numbers work. Lots of people are interested in this, guys. That's where you find your money partners. But what kind of returns were there for the working partners? Well, they got 50% of the gain. 50% of that 160, whatever it works out to be, 81,000. They put nothing in. That's an infinite percentage of an ROI. Is the working partner or the managing partner in this case happy? Are they happy, guys? Yes, they are. Because... They just made 80,000. Yes, it took five years for them to get that $80,000 check or most of that 80,000 because probably that cash flow is divided up in between. But it took them five years to get it. But now they get 80,000. Imagine if they did this three times, five times, 10 times, or 100 times. What kind of return are you going to have within five years, depending on how many times you do this? And remember, the cash flow is pretty predictable. Yes, rents go up. Expenses go up, rents go down, expenses go down, but it's fairly predictable. Price gains are not really predictable, but we're only counting on a 3% increase here. What happens if this goes up four, five, six, seven, eight percent in value? What a dramatic change that's going to make to these numbers. Is a working partner happy? Yes. Is a financial partner happy? Yes. Okay, so there's a simple flow chart as to how the numbers work on a joint venture.